the work session for the Southampton Town Trustees on December 6, 2021. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag. To the flag. Uh, in the United States of America. Hey, thank you. So, would the Secretary Treasurer please call the roll? Uh, President Eric Schultz. Here. Secretary Treasurer Scott M. Horowitz. I'm here. Edward J. Warner Jr. Here. Dusty William Pell IV. Present. Dusty Ann Welker. Here. The President, we have a a quorum. Okay, very good. So, first item on the agenda is to amend the Board of Trustees fee schedule for 2022. Any discussions on that? Let's just go over it. Just bring it up. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to bring it up on my phone. It won't come up. Just resent it this morning, Ed. I can share this if that's easier. Actually, uh, if you can put it up on the screen, that would be good. And then we could go to the first yeah. page, page by page. Cool. It's uh, four pages long. That'd be the easiest way so they can see it. A way that people can see it. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you can see, the uh, there's uh, no change in the proposed fees for the first page. So question on that, please. Um, it's been brought up before. Um, is there any possibility that the four by fours for first responders could be at a either free or at a reduced <laughs> rate? What do you guys think? Hey, uh, and we talked about this um, last year and the year before and the year before that. Most right. of them, most of them feel that they they rather pay the money to protect their right to help pay the lawsuit so they can keep on going on the beach. There's very a few of them who want a discount. Okay. Very few. Well, it's when just trustee when trustee Stafford was here, we did change some of the fees uh, for the. Uh, you know, uh, veterans and stuff like that. But we did have a discussion. It has to be uh, six years ago, Billy. And uh, it was yeah. pretty much a consensus amongst everybody that I talked to and Bruce talked to and you talked to that it was going to be left status quo for the same reasons that you're saying. I mean, the fees are very nominal as far as charging. And most of these fees we do need to be able to bankroll some of these lawsuits that we're in right now presently. And, uh, you know, at, 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 even at uh, 20, 30, 40, $50 a pop for these uh, individual uh, permits, it's, you know, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, these uh, lawsuits. And it's, you know, really important that we continue to fight for the uh, use, the historic uses of the beach. I agree with That's that. Exactly. If, if we don't, they're not going to, they won't need a permit because we won't be able to go on the beach in a few more years. Right. That's right. exactly what my understanding was. Yes. Okay. And it's needed even more now since the town board has not been funding our lawsuits for the past two administrations. Up until that time, the, we always met with the town board and they, uh, they backed us up, but that's not the case anymore. So. Okay. I just okay. wanted to see if there was some way that we could recognize the work and especially the time that uh, first responders do commit to our community. And this seemed to be a way that would recognize their efforts and especially the, the years that many of them put in. But I'll keep looking, think, see what else there can be. Okay. Well, you know, there's ways to always support them and, you know, whenever they have an event or they're looking for donations or they're having a, some form of a drive. I mean, I always support these folks and I think that's a way that you could support them. And, and, and just to echo what trustees um, Schultz and, uh, and Pell and Warner said in my conversations with them, you know, to save five or ten dollars to put the trustees in a, uh, you know, a less than stable 
position when it comes to defending and fighting for access to things that they enjoy recreationally with their family is really not not what they're looking for. And for most people that get involved in in, in the public service volunteer services, that they're not they're not generally doing it to save five or ten dollars uh, on on a, on a permit, on a beer, especially on a beer. <laughs> There's not a lot of there's not a lot of meat in that fee to really to really do a lot. So I, you know, it's kind of like what they were saying. Everyone felt it made more sense to uh, do the best job you can to preserving that resource for everybody and keep the finances stable. Well, at one yeah, point, in time, Billy, much. Eric, Billy, do you remember when Saba gave us a ten thousand dollar check to help with the lawsuits on the beach yeah. driving and beach access? Yes. So I mean, they've gone above and beyond. So oh, I mean, yeah. we're, we're fighting the fight for them with uh, minimal payments. I mean, if we were, uh, you know, if we had a better maybe relationship with the town board and they were willing to give us some more backing as far as finances for these lawsuits and uh, not even the backing, it's just basically the uh, confidence to back up, back us up with, uh, you know, with them coming aboard, you know, it's, you know, I feel that we're out in the, out in the breeze swinging here a lot of times fighting these lawsuits and we really don't have the true, you know, backing of the town board and, and the supervisors sometimes it's really difficult. Yes. I agree with you, Ed. You know, uh, Ed's, uh, I mean, um, Bill's a volunteer fireman. I was in East Quag for 15 years and ex assistant chief and, uh, I, I back up what Bill said. The sentiment then was, and I think now, is that uh, they're not worried about the fees. It's they're worried about the, the beach access. Continued. You know. Yeah, my son's a volunteer fireman with the East Quag, as you know, Eric. And um, a lot of those gentlemen are, are, you know, they're water fowlers as well. And, uh, you know, they know the challenges that the board is up uh, against in order to maintain you know, all of these resources and, um, you know, it's, it's a mutually beneficial relationship in my view between, you know, the first responders and the board of trustees where we're, we're all doing the good public service work. And I think we understand each other and we support and care very much and respect the amount of time that each, each one of those entities uh, puts in. So I, I think it's a, a reasonable thing. Okay. So, uh, if everybody's okay with page number one, we can go to page number two. We're going to keep Oops. everything the same, just to be clear. Yes, yes. I think. On page um, number one. Okay. Lenny, I'm in a work session. Can you text me? Scott, maybe turn your video, your audio off. Okay, you got it. Okay. Okay, page two. Commercial guidelines is on the top, just to make sure. There's no proposed uh, increase in fees on that. When when was the last time we went up on this stuff here? Two years ago. I think we should go up a little bit uh, on this. Mm -hmm. We're facing a lot of lawsuits. Like Ed says, we have no backing from the town board. They're threatening to cut our budget again with... Um, I was in there and we have a lot more stuff to pay. So I think we have to go up a little bit, not too much, just a little bit here. I think the as built fee could go up to $2,500. If someone um, installs something without permits and then has to come back around and get the permits. What's the as built fee for uh, the other boards? I'm not sure about that. Does that well, have think, any, does that have any bearing? I think Are we I looking think you, to make the fee of such a value that it's a deterrent to work without our permits? That's the question. Exactly. And does the fifteen hundred dollars recognize that, or maybe a higher fee that would uh, be more uh, more uh, recognizable to uh, a uh, conservation is a thousand dollars. Right, because I think we, we thought about that when we set it at 15, because as it says, it doesn't include the application fee. Um, the only thing that I, I would say is that if you're talking about a nexus uh, of expenses to the justification of fees, I think that the difference of this year 
versus well, not even this year, but prior years with this year and moving forward <clears throat> is going to be the addition of a um, another employee for the purposes of doing the dock inspections, because after decades of the, the, the you know, the Bay Constables, Marine Patrol, you know, group have always done them. And now there's going to be an additional employee uh, that's going to have to do that. Uh, and as you are aware, you know, I've been helping out with this because we don't want to be jamming up real estate closing because obviously people buying these, these homes want to make sure that they have certificates of occupancies and certificates of compliance with the structures and it's become an issue. So, you know, perhaps that something like that needs to be, uh, needs to be properly addressed because that's going to be a change. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking at specific structures that are on our underwater lands and properties that we hold in trust, specifically bulkheads, rock revetments, walkways, dredging, uh, fixed docks, floating docks, uh, pilings, sand fencing, uh, access steps and stuff like that. I mean, basically, we incur basically a one-time fee on these uh, structures, and they could be there for 50 years. So, you know, five dollars a linear foot for a bulkhead uh, and it's there for 50 years is is a very minimal cost to a, uh, you know, a, a, a resident to put, you know, a structure on our property. We do not receive any of the taxes. We don't receive no future revenues from any of these structures. So that part, I think, should be, uh, you know, somewhat higher. But the other stuff, you know, the, the actual fees that we charge for the, you know, basically uh, the doing the work and application and stuff like that, I, I'm kind of okay with them. But I think moving forward, I think we should up like the bulkhead fee, the walkway fee uh, from $6 to and $5 to maybe, uh, you know, go up, you know, 20% or something like that moving, moving for next year. I, I really think that because it's a one-time fee. You know what I mean, Eric? You know, East yeah, Hampton well, you, does get a dock fee. Right. You do have the option of doing something similar to East Hampton so that you would get the revenue from the taxes on that. I mean, right now, the town is is getting the uh, – uh, they assess any docks or structures, uh, and they go – that goes with the property. And then it's um, – the uh, town receives the money on the assessment on that. If you did something like East Hampton does, then the, then the trustees, since it's basically like a uh, a dock, would be uh, a lease technically on on our property. So you would uh, the dock inspection fee is is uh, it covers that, which would give you a, a source of revenue, and uh, it would uh, facilitate removal of uh, dilapidated docks because people are not going to pay a fee for uh, something that they're not using. So it would be kind of like a self-cleaning oven, so to speak, for the Bay. Would the you know, fee encompass the uh, person's salary that was going to be doing the inspections? Or well, would that, it be something going that down the trustees of the area do the inspections? Hold on that, a second. That, time out. Yeah, we, yeah that's for uh, the future, you know. Time out. <laughs> Say, you, you got to tread carefully where you're going right now, because this is a responsibility that was supposed to be uh, another another group's responsibility to be providing that service to the board. I mean, am I am I correct in that? For how many oh, yeah. decades was it done a certain way? These compliance inspections, right? Oh yeah, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about having an inspector going around every year and inspecting. No, the I'm doctor. talking. I'm talking where Ed was going about the employees who's pay, who's pay, you know. And so forth, right? So, oh, at right, least, right, right, right. We know that in for the past decades, it was, it was done by the constables, right? Right, right. No issue. I, I had to do like five of these last week myself because they were jamming up people, you know. Right. Um, so, you know, depending upon how this whole thing plays out, we're going to have to we're going to have to look at that. Uh, but it really is a responsibility of these folks. And then relative to what you're saying about some form of fee on the floating docks, what's the, I think there's a, a bit of more work that we got to do, I think, for that actually to come into implementation, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's a lot of work to do. That's, that's just a proposed uh, 
source of revenue in the future right now. Right now, we're talking about the application fees right now. Installation fees, the initial installation right. fees. Yes. The one-time yes. fee. Yes. Yes. And I think that other stuff internally has to be worked through as far yes. as, yes. you know. Yeah, let's get back on track. Yeah, no. we have a lot of, so we have a lot of. Uh, yeah, let's, let's start from the first line again on page okay. two. So you got your commercial guide license is uh, 150 and the impound fees is 100. Uh, a little research here uh, while you guys were talking. The conservation board for uh, as built uh, charges a thousand. Yep. Uh, last year we upped the dock, uh, the residential dock slips to from 65 to 75. I believe the uh, commercials went from 65 to 100. So they were taken care of last year. Uh, and I believe most of the other stuff that was there is pretty much status quo from previous years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on the as-built fee? Increasing that? Let's go with it. Or we could go up to 2,000 on that. I'm fine. Yeah, five. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. We, Because we've had several that have come before us just in the past um, couple meetings. So it's just there needs to be you know, some sort of penalty that comes with this lack of. Oh, I think oh. if you probably raise it to 10,000, it still wouldn't be a deterrent, not in this economy. Not for some people. This, this area here. You know, when um, they take their house is, for is $2 the, million dollars is, and tear it down and build a new one. Is the as built fee 1500 or 2000? Someone just text, uh, email me that it's already 2000. No, it's 1500. Okay. It's right. but, that's, but then you got to add in the other fee. I think that's where they're coming up with their two thousand because the they got they have to pay the app fee plus this fee. Right. Yeah, yeah you have an application fee on top of it, the, which brings it to okay. two thousand. You have right, a fifteen hundred dollar so. as built, and then an application fee on top of that. Right. It, so it's it clearly, a two thousand dollar fee. It clearly states the as built fee does not include the application fee. Right. Okay. Right, so, so it is two, that, the total is 2K. No, it, the, t the total of the application fee and the as-built fee, sorry, yes. Yes. So the proposed um, change would be for solely the as-built fee to increase it, which would increase the total application and as-built fee. Uh-huh. Well, it's, in reality, it's the only deterrent that we have uh, as far as uh, people doing work without a, an application or permit. Exactly. And there have been several instances in the past couple meetings, and it is a one-time fee, and it would be a source of revenue. And if it goes to court, we don't get any of the fees in back, you know, in general. So it goes to the general the fund, correct. Yeah, right. This is the only way we have control over it. So it sounds like everyone's on board with the 2000, okay. right? All right. Yes. What, about, yeah, what about the rest? The bulkhead, walkway, dredging, fixed dock, floating dock? Uh, I think they should go up a dollar, a dollar right down each one of, or two dollars because they're on our property. They're, you know, we have approved on Peconic Bay boathouses, uh, decks with houses on structures that with, without without our permitting it, these structures would never exist. They're off of bulkheads um, by Gathering Rocks Road. Um, several of those houses that are literally on top of our, you know, beaches, um, you know, uh, allowing a person to put something like that there, you know, for $10 a square foot is, is such a minimal charge. And all these other charges that we have, they're on our property. It's a one-time fee. If we had an on, an ongoing recurring fee where we get, you know, some something back every year from each one of these uh, structures, you know, I would feel comfortable not moving it up in, in price. But looking at it the way it is right now, it's a one-time fee, and this is this is our only chance. Hey, I, Ed. I think. Hey Ed. Yes. Uh, let's do the bulk at ten dollars. The walk rates ten dollars. The dredge, keep the dredge the same. Fixed docks, ten dollars. Floating docks, ten dollars. The jetty and riprap, go go up to ten dollars. 
the piles go up five dollars the sand fence go go to five dollars the steps and stairs goes to ten dollars um yeah, because they're all on our property, guys. Yeah. I mean, well, so but, we're, we're, but you, I think you ran it. You ran it off to ten dollars. It's easy figuring, and um, and we haven't been up in like you say in a couple of years. So we're good for a couple more years. Okay, I, I so say, if we're if we're gonna sorry, Scott, if we're gonna change all of those fees, when will they get implemented? Because that's a fair amount of work for the office. That's why we're doing Jan it. It's right. January. January. It's it's January. not really work. Yes. It's just mathematics. But, yeah. but yes. Is that possible if we make those changes? Are you guys um, okay with that? I think it's possible. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, James, if you want to weigh in here, I know it's a little tricky when the general permit fees change on his end when it comes to calculating the dimensional fees. I think that because then some of the applications that came in in 2021, we still honor the 2021. So like there's a transitional period of, you know, a few months at least where, he's still dealing with 2021 fees right. in 2022. And with him being out, I don't know how difficult that might be for Linnea, who is going to be helping and stepping in. Well, in his well we, we, can, we, we can, can answer any questions. It's math. March 1st. Yeah, James, March 1st. Implementation of March 1st. That will give this time to work through this whole hey, issue. And I would not even, Ed, I yes. would not even do that. Just no, it's we mathematics. Can, it's mathematics, like Scott says, and we can manage it. So it takes a week longer to do the permit. Uh, we can figure that out. Okay. okay. Um, you don't want to make it too complicated. Yes. If you give a date, yes. then the date's going to be moved again. Okay. January 1st. Anything that comes in after January 1st <laughs> is, uh, is the new permit fee. And That's then, right. uh, you know, you don't, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't collect the fees until the, uh, the um, applications approved. Applications approved. Yep. So you're talking. Yep going to be two three four weeks or five weeks anyway way beyond that. good by the time you get back right way so logistically that. if we can work it in the office then i'll be in favor but if it's going to be one of can, these can things I, that are going to be can, can i just can, jump in here for a can second I say something? can i say something please it's james james speaking um yeah we we did this in i think 2018 uh we increased it uh there was a transitional time where uh, if a permit was put in in 2018 and it was switched in 2019, we gave them the fees for uh, 2018. Uh, so we do have to subtract uh, because Govern can't dec uh, decipher the two different fees from two different years. It has to be put in for the new year. So we have to subtract the money. It's not, we, we got through it the, the first time. That's not, it's going to take some extra time. Um, but, you know, as long as you guys are aware that it's going to take that extra time, it's fine. Um, as long as Sean's okay with the whole process of changing it and then using the old fees for the permit applications that were submitted this year and they don't get charged for this year, or they get charged for this year, not the new fees, um, then it, it shouldn't be a problem. It's just going to be a little bit of a transitional period for that. Um, but we'll have to work that out with, uh, you know, Brandy was here last time. So now we have Lisa here. So I'll have to show her that we're going to be using the older fees on some of the applications and we're going to have to be subtracting. Yeah. So that's what's going to show up on the uh, reports daily. So it's there is, you know, there, there might be some confusion at first and some. It's not quite as simple as it sounds, but we will get it done. Right. Okay. If it's stamped before January 1st, it's the old fee. If it's after January 1st, it will incur the uh, charges, uh, the greater fee charges, right? Right. So we, so we like normally the govern system actually adds the fees up and that's what the charges on the invoice. So if we're going to be doing the old fees on the older permits that are, that were submitted in 2021, then we have to actually write that out and, and calculate them. So it's, 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 it's just a, it's a different process. So we could do it. It's just going to take longer and it's, you know, it's, it's more work. That's it. But once we get through all those applications that were submitted in 2021, then we're clean. So I don't suggest if you're going to, what, what I would suggest, if you're going to increase them this year, don't increase them next year because 
it's just then it's going to get really confusing because as you see one of the applications we have on work session is a 2015 application that they're modifying um that that never got approved so uh, i have you know we got to figure that out because it's a it was it was submitted in 2015 never got approved it was pending and now they modified the plans and now it's up for approval so they're you know, it's, it's, it can get very confusing when you're doing different. Well, that's approval. So I don't see where that goes back to 2015. What's that? I don't see where that would go back to 2015 if it's getting approved in 22. I don't but think what I'm saying is if you, have a, if you change them this year in 2021 and you change them next year in 2022, now you're creating even more, you know, different fees for different years and different applications. Yeah. So confusion. Trying to increase it, wait, confusion. wait longer right. so that it can even out. That's okay. I, I, I think there's another consideration here, though. Um, I don't think that, you know, like using Eddie's uh, rationale about it being on our property, I think for, for um, bulkheaded properties, when they're doing walkways on their property, but attached to our bulkhead, uh, I'm not comfortable going up on those. Yeah, it's actually on their property. It's on their property, and it's still a lot of money. If you're talking five bucks a square foot, do the math on how big some of those things are. You're talking about a sizable fee. I don't. I'm not comfortable with raising that any higher than it is when it's landward of a bulkhead. If it's on a catwalk going out on over trustee property, different story. But when it's landward, in that scenario, on their property, but they're it's our jurisdiction, so they have to come to us for permitting. It's already, I mean, if, if you have a guy with a, you know, 75 times times 10 foot, 750 square foot times five bucks, you're talking $3,750 just for that. So to go I, I higher than that. I, Scott, I specifically said on our property. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. But we're going to have to differentiate that though, because. Yeah, right now it's not. It's, it's not broken out thing. that way. So one it's thing. going to have to be separated out is what I'm saying. Which we can do. Right. So you may have to add another column on here just so that there's no confusion. So that yeah, you that leave could, that, that one alone. Done. Right. I mean, as, unless somebody feels different about it, I think going with Eddie's no. idea requires us to have to separate it out. I, I think yeah. that would be the appropriate way to do it. That way, that, that way the, uh, applicant would know what he's paying for that's you know if he has a question why is it so much more because your part of your project is on the trust property the other part is on my property so he he'll know and i kind of so, i agree with that the so walkway trust property and walkway non-trust property or just walkway and i will we'll work the wording out we'll, we'll yes right we'll work that out right. moving down the kayak uh rack <laughs> Don't Wait, hold on, Ed, Ed Je Jess, do you want us, are you good, Jess? Um, I'm just, I don't remember what you guys said about the boathouse deck or other structure. What was that? No. Did you want to increase that one? Ed, did you say 20 for that? I, I would, it's on our property and without us giving permits for these structures, they would never exist. Just so there's no confusion, I just want to type it on the screen just so everyone... What was yep. the one that you didn't want to change that you didn't it, feel comfortable? It, it necessitates breaking out the walkway ramp and catwalk. So we'll uh -huh. have to create, so it'll, it'll mean a different line, Jess, and then leave the walkway at five. But walkway double, at five. Right, but double the ramp and catwalk to 10. Okay, I see what you're saying. Hey, Scott. Yeah. I think, on the, I think instead of leaving it at five, for the on the people's property, at least go up to a dollar. So go up to six. You want to go, go to six? Six or seven. Yeah. Fifty times. All right, so seven fifty times six. Scott, actually, um, it encourages people to have buffers rather than those long lengths of walkways, yeah. which is what we've been trying to trend yeah, towards it. it goes it just it goes against um it's their property you know what i'm saying it's like you know what i'm saying it's like even just going by six if you take a 75 right 
75 feet times 10 feet, 750 square feet times $6, $4,500, just so that they could have a, a walkway on their property. I, I just, you know, it's just a I think that's a little excessive. It's excessive. I, I just think that's excessive. I, I'm sorry, but it, it, is it, is it know, excessive or is it a deterrent for them? You know, you know, there's alternatives also that you can put a, 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 a grass buffer. They could put stones. You know, do they need this tremendously large you know, I, I, deck area? So, I mean, I'm, there's, two, there's two ways of looking at it. I'm kind of like a 75 you know, foot. If you have somebody that's got a hundred or 150 foot property, your bulkheaded property, I'm just using the number 75 just because whatever. No, I it, or it, whatever. It, it's like look at a guy who lives in Shinnecock Shores. All right. You know, if they got a 50 foot or 75 foot times equals, I, I just think it's, you know, it's just a little much i think it's a little much and it's on it's on their property you know what i mean if it's if you're gonna buffers are great it's all great you know the it's a separate issue but when you're talking about charging people fees for you know improving their property and enjoying their property i just I, you know it just seems like it's getting much put yourself um in the shoes of the person paying that fee you know i just think it's a bit much um but whatever, but it's important not, you guys uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm just looking at doing the math here and I'm like, what, $4,500 for that? You know, it seems like a lot. You know, Scott, uh, it, the, the price increases also because you can't use treated wood. But, you know, you can't do a broad brush and say, you know, buffers, you need to put buffers in all over town because, you know, don't kid yourself. When people have beach grass as a buffer, they fertilize it. And when they have rocks near the bulkhead guess what round up we, we grow up in them and then you got the landscaper spraying roundup in there because it looks all the crabgrass is coming up through the rock and everything like that and they're not doing it by hand they're going to do it in the simplest manner they can and, and not only use roundup but they'll use uh you know pre-emergence weed killer or uh, or actually a 2,4-D compounds that uh, that poison the ground and, and it's constantly leaching in so in some cases in constrained areas that uh, walkways are uh, the best solution for the situation. That's, that's my point. Piece of property, you know, uh, in its natural state, that's cool. But not in, not in a situation like Shinnecock Shores or some of these canals. They, they have to have walkways because they're so, uh, limited on, on the area that they have to utilize on their property. That's, okay, let's, that's let's, my point. Okay, so we'll keep it not, at $5 and we'll go yeah. with the uh, over our property will yeah, increase the fit. Yes. Okay. Sorry. So you'd like to keep this at five and then this at 10. Yes. Okay. Yes. And all the other fees look correct. Yes. Great. John did just mention that he has to step out. I don't know if you guys saw that in the chat. Yes. Okay. Now we down on, um, on dredging. Keep that status bro. Okay. We upped it last year, Billy. How about fixed stocks? Go up to ten dollars and fixed stocks. Right here. Oh. Yep. You guys fine with that? Yeah, I mean, we're not going to. We do this about every three years. Yeah. And, uh, how about the rip wrap? To go on ten on that. That'd be just like a jetty or a uh, or a um, yeah. bulkhead. Yeah. And how about the piles? You got $20 for a pile. You want to go up to 25? Just change them on the screen. You're seeing that, right, Bill? Um, no, I'm looking in at my purple, own. Oh, the purple she's box. changing. Okay. That Jess, she's so efficient. I know. That's why <laughs> she got a bigger office than we got. <laughs> Okay. Um, so we all good on those uh, dimensional uh, increases? Yeah. Kayak. <clears throat> well, we started out on 100 because we uh, basically 
started the program last year. Um, anybody have any thoughts on that? We didn't, we sold out Oakhurst, but we did not sell out um, Little Neck. So let's continue it as a pilot program at these fees, but let's look to see. I think it needs a little more um, marketing uh, to fill these up and then let's see what the demand is. And so yeah. if we, move it from we might there. have to, we might have to move them around. And well, I want, and I want that we went up before, other day that's pretty high let's stay that leave that alone yeah let's go to page three the license agreement um we have license agreements with approximately three or four business entities correct yes or maybe so, more. Mostly thinking, uh, water skiing and uh, stuff like that, correct? Kayak and paddle boards. Yep. When's the last time that fee was raised? I think we... Uh, we started off with numbers. Did we, did we start those numbers when we, when we first did it? Yeah, we didn't even have, I don't think we just had a license agreement. I don't think we even yeah. charged the first time we did it. No. But we as just did we've, it evolved, I believe we have a fee. I don't, I don't know. Uh, would yeah. it be a, a monthly fee or a uh, something that would be a, a yearly fee? Because, it, you know, a yearly the year, fee would. Every, these are 500 is, a, is one, once a year. I think that's a fair, you know, a fair uh, charge for somebody to be able to have a uh, place to step on a boat to get his uh, clients in and, in and out on, you know, on, on a safe yeah. dock that we maintain. So I think that's a, that's a, you know, an adequate fee for that particular, you know, uh, agreement. The more I think, into, I think the more are all fine. Well, well, just circling back around for one minute to the license agreement and the renewal to the license agreement. Um, this is a one-time fee. Um, and it's part of cost of doing business. And I think that the entities that are applying for these agreements, um, I, I think there's room there for a bit of revenue generation. Okay, and how much do you think we should go up? Let's go. I think if we went up to 750 and with the renewal to 500 okay, for the I'm license fine. agreements. Thanks, Ann. That's a good idea. You guys all agree with that? Well, like I say, this these fees will go directly back to the trustee docks, the trustee launching yep. ramps, the trustee facilities oh, yeah. to I upgrade the, them. It yep. goes so, back to the trustees, period. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can, you know, unfortunately, of uh, all. Well, in reality, Dick Texas dock work is an expensive venture for us to do. I mean, we yeah. did a small couple small projects and it was right, Scott, last year we did uh, Bay Avenue. We did the commercial dock and it's you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, we're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt service. OK, so that we can keep these things yeah. in a uh, safe and functional condition. So it takes revenue. You can't run the trustees without revenue. You know, you, yeah. you want there to be a nexus. Yeah. You don't want to be abusive, but you need, yeah. to, you need to keep the lights on. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, give, I'll give you a quick, for instance, it's probably going to be about $35,000 to fix the ramp at, uh, at Pine Neck down in uh, Noyak, where we charge $500 for a couple people to use that ramp, use the uh, dock and everything. So, you know, unfortunately, our revenue is not subsidized by the town. Whatever no. money we put make in these few, uh, you know, applications is where where this where these funds come from. Well, we, we I estimated that we we need about one hundred and fifty grand to repair various ramps. Just yes. repair various ramps yeah. throughout the township. My <laughs> estimate that I submitted uh, capital project wise was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for fixing ramps. So if you're saying we're going to eat up thirty five k just that one, okay. Yeah. Now we're down to 115, right? Yes, yeah, so. And there's a lot, 
of other ramps that are in pretty bad shape, right? Yeah, right. Uh, and, let's move uh, to the next line. Uh, okay. You got Morins. I think we went up all that stuff last year. In the. What do you think about the personal and um, watercraft, Morin? I think that's all fine. I think that's fine for now. Yeah. The shellfish, we went up last year on that to the commercial guys. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that's all fine. Let's go. That would be that alone. Yeah. So let's yep. go to let's go to the last page. Yep. Question on the impound fee for the duck blinds. When is the last time that any of you recall that there was an impound fee charged? Uh, about two years ago. We had that one. Remember, it was in the, they, they was in the, um, <clears throat> in the, maybe it was three years ago, it was sitting in there. We finally got, they finally um, came, guy came and got it or they chopped oh, it up. That was, that was West Hampton. Yeah. That took a long time. The uh, the uh, bay constables hold it off. Yeah. So the bay constables ended up doing it. Uh, uh, I think so. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Well, just to heads up, if we start to implement removal of these duck blinds during the off season of hunting, we're going to have a lot more. People impound. getting that, yeah. they're going to impound a lot more of these. Yes. And also um, on the waterfowl application renewal, and um, which is free, I think we should change that for inspection. We tried it, I, you know, we brought this up years ago. Um, instead of, you can't really charge them for the application or the renewal, but we can charge them for the inspection of the um, duck blinds. Um, the money can go towards um, getting rid of the derelicts, which Ed knows all about. Like I know about it because we're on the water all the time. We see the derelict ones. Um, also for training, um, the young hunters, the new hunters where they, and also to help pay our office staff to do all this paperwork for them. Well, li li literally it's probably a hundred man hours of uh, between the bay constables, uh, the office staff, the trustees running this, maybe, I don't even know, maybe it's probably more than that, just running this whole program at no cost, you know, which we've been doing for my whole time on the board. Um, you know, and now that we have registered blinds and we have yearly inspections of all of these blinds, that means we're sending the bay constables um, or, bay, or possibly the trustees out to do these inspections if the bay constables, um, you know, don't see fit to do them. So it's it's a it's a really a time consuming uh, practice in the office. So I think we should st start um, like change this the renewal to inspection and charge a hundred dollars to inspect each year, each blind. Sean just mentioned to me last week um, that if there was going to be any like major changes to this, we should make it a public hearing. Right. I, was, so I don't I know would, if that's I what would, I don't know if I this do, recommendation would raise no, it to that. I know he's not on the video right um, now. Yeah. Hey, that's fine, Jessica. We can leave this how it is. Then when we have the public hearing for, um, we can add that into the public hearing. Okay. Uh, then we I can would, amend the fee schedule at a later date. And yes. Maybe, okay. Next year. I, I don't think we should ever do anything with the hunting uh, program until we have a public hearing because mm -hmm. there's 350 blinds, probably 700 people that have the ability to hunt, plus 100 people on a waiting list. And in the community outreach, I think oh, yeah. I've been, you know, I know, I know it could be contentious at, at times, oh, but I think it's yeah. something that we should reach out and have a conversation and come up with a, a good holistic approach to this uh, hunting. Because yeah, I think a lot of the hunters, I think a lot of the hunters wouldn't mind paying the, the fee for um, to protect, to help protect their rights 
And, you know, we have been having a lot of complaints and we're going to end up in law and court with some of these people eventually um, protect their right. But also get rid of the ones who don't, um, they don't care about their blinds. They just there's, some, for- there's some blue book amendment discussions. Maybe this could be part of that yeah. and part of the public hearing process. I just said that in, yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions on this? Are we done with this? Just to recap, license agreements are going up, general permit fees, dimensional fees, and then these this application fee, the legalization. And that's it. And I'll make those changes. We'll recall and amend at the meeting because it's in the agenda blank right now. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So uh, next item is Bill's got uh, hydraulic steering for the trustee barge. Um, that's they want to update the stand in the barge. Um, right now it's um, old school with the cables and it, it you really got to, like Ed knows, because he he used them years ago, I used it. it you really got to turn the wheel to, to uh, move the barge and to keep, to keep updating the barge. It's a very important piece of equipment. I think it's a very small investment in it. I agree, Billy. I had a discussion with uh, Richie Franks as far as moving from the Teleflex steering, which basically you replace every year or up to two years at a you know, substantial cost. Uh, the initial uh, outlay of the hydraulic is somewhat more, but it, you should be able to get 10 years out of it. So and it's much easier to maintain. Yeah. Okay, Who's doing this about. job? Are we doing They're it gonna, in-house? In- in-house. All right. So that's for the parts, then the estimate that's on yeah. for the section. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Blue book amendment for discussion regarding jet skis. Uh, do we, do we, these two, um, Sean had requested um, if these could be put on for the last or um, after the permit application discussions, but because I can't he, really do that, Ann, because I have he's in another, and he's in another I, meeting. And the tough on him because he's supposed to be at our meeting. He's and he's not at our meeting. Then the town should give us another lawyer to sit in his place. I have a doctor's appointment at eleven o'clock, which I'm leaving. So I would like to discuss this now. This meeting, if the board his is meeting, fine. his if meeting not, was scheduled prior to the changes that were made in the trustee work session, and well, I'm so sure, the, I'm sure, the lawyer, the, 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 another lawyer. I'm sure that he can make updates if there are any changes. Well, it's a discussion that we're not making yeah. any yeah, changes. Right. We're the, discussing what's it. What is the yeah. discussion on it? Um, the discussion is this discussion on it is about having a public hearing to change the blue book. Um, right now, the blue book says that you need a permit to have a jet ski, but that does not al- um, allow for commercial use in a marina. We have several marinas with a lot of jet ski floats and jet skis. And right now they are all illegal because they don't have a permit for them. Um, that's what we have to figure out. How are we going to do this? Is a jet ski and a float in one slip? Is it free? They just have to notify us or do we charge them for it? Right, there was a lot of discussion on this in the in the first place. Yes. As far as the jet ski cannot be tied up to a dock by itself, it needs a float. So it's yes. it's part it's part of the whole jet ski uh, package. Package, right? That sounds yeah. good. So um, if a if a marina takes uh, has a boat slip and. Uh, they remove the boat and put a jet ski in its place, uh, would they have to get a separate permit for a jet ski float? That's what it comes down to. You got it. That's what we have to figure out to change the blue book. So people don't, you know, right now people could call up and complain, hey, that marina does not have a permit for that float and jet ski there, but I have one. Right. Well, the, right. the whole issue with the jet ski float um, being tied up 
at a along a regular float was the shading and the submerged aquatic vegetation. This is where we were taking it originally. And it's basically you have a, a six by 20 float with another structure that is a permanent structure as long as that jet ski is being used, where a boat comes and goes. So it doesn't have constant shading over the bottom. And that was, this right. is, th that was the question that we worked through originally for the residential part of it. So th that's like we're having a public hearing. We have to bring the science to this also. Right, right. Correct. So I think okay. we should schedule a public hearing to uh, have the marina owners and, you know, people that use these, uh, you know, multiple uh, jet ski docks uh, floats, you know, to permit right. them or not to permit them and how to move forward. Okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. That's what, that's why we're talking about it. Okay. Public hearing. Public hearing. So next one, uh, Blue Book Amendment discussion uh, regarding waterfowl hunting. What was that about? Um, that is, um, me and Ed was talking about that, about having them moved um, on off season. Um, they can let them put them in their spot a month before, then a month after they have to be removed. Um, in which book? In which a state. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. You want to talk? Go ahead. No, no, I just want to ask a question when you're finished. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm just asking in which water bodies is this? Because in Mecox, this is now the rule. So where, where are you proposing this now? This is in, 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 in the bays, in the creeks. Down wide, right? Down. Wherever yes, I, the duck lines are sitting on the meadow for multiple months yeah. and destroying the beach grass, the meadow yeah. grass. Is this another right. public hearing situation? Or? It, it, it's yeah. another public hearing. It, we, yes. We'll, we'll have it. Well, we should have a waterfowl public hearing yeah. and discuss, you know, the, you know, the fees, the inspection fees and put it all on for, you know, a large public hearing. Yes. I think uh, we haven't had one of those in a while. And uh, with the changing times out here and the changing demographics, it's probably good to uh, let everybody have a, uh, a voice you know, about what's, what's going on with waterfowl hunting. Correct. Uh, but especially the waterfowlers. Uh, I think originally what we talked about was um, affording some spots as a tie-up zone so they could all be, uh, you know, they wouldn't have to haul them out. Say like the, uh, I think in Shinnecock was the talk about having and putting them in the old uh, uh, lagoon by the, where the barge used to be. You know, right. the, 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 over there on the Triton Lane at the end uh so uh, perhaps some of the uh waterfowlers will have some uh, good ideas uh you know about how to straighten this out well basically safe havens for these duck blinds in the off season in case you got a hurricane too that's that was an issue during sandy uh, there were several duck blinds that had broken loose and you know caused some uh issues with waterfront property owners so we have to look, you know, to mm -hmm. remediate some of these issues. Yep. Okay. I agree with that. Okay. Hey. So Jesse, you could set up the public hearing for that too, please. Yeah, I believe Sean has the notice on for the December 15th meeting, and then he has the public hearing scheduled for the first meeting in January, with, which is January 10th. Do we have to do, have to put up exactly what we're going to discuss, right, on the public hearing notice? Yeah, he already drew up a notice, so I don't know uh, if you he want might, to discuss that with him when he comes on later. Or yeah, you have to tell him he has to amend it to um, inspection fees. Okay. Billy, when we had the public hearings for the duck hunting last time, we had it at Hampton Bays because yes. the number of people that showed yep. up and Zoom yes. meeting. So we, I don't know how we're going to be uh, doing these hearings, Zoom or in person. But if we could set up a larger venue or possibly a larger venue, if it's going to be in person, I would recommend that highly. I would, I would do it at night. I would agree with Probably you. Zoom. And do it at night. It, yeah. Zoom? Yeah. Would, would Zoom get a large amount of people? Uh, some people well, know how to, some people don't. The notice is on today, actually. All right, I think we, we'll have to discuss this further before we make take an yeah, action. Yeah, you can get 100 it. people. All right, 100 uh, well, people you get on Zoom? Charles said 100. 
Yeah. I think it's multiple public hearings at that stage, but we'll we'll see what, what we come up with. All right. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. You, either that or you wait a little bit until some of this uh, lifts so you can go back into public meetings. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I sure. think in person yeah. for the stock yeah. hunting is would be the appropriate way to deal with it. I mean, it's 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 definitely going to be multiple, as Ed was pointed out, I would think. I don't think you're yeah. going to resolve we anything. Might, in we, we might want to start with Zoom then. Because if it's right. going to be so multiple. you may want to start and then you can see what yeah, direction you're going to why you can't do both. Okay. What? We could always transition into a yeah. in-person meeting. Charles, okay. say that. Charles, say that again. There's no reason why you can't do both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a okay. screen up there too. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Thanks, Charles. It just becomes a little more orderly when you have it in uh, open session. You know, that you can people raise their hand, and then you can you know queue up people, and they can wait in line and everything. It's it's uh, um, and some of the not everybody's familiar with the technology or wants to be with it. it the high schools. Excuse me. I said you might want to consider doing it at one of the high schools or two high schools, one east and west of the canal. Yep. All right. Well, we can figure that out. Yep. All right. We better move on to general permit applications because we have a few of them here. Okay, Bill, everybody. you want to go first and get yours out of the way, being that you uh, have a meeting coming up? Yeah. You have yeah, to go, go down. Um, I have Hoffman. 14 Millstone Lane. Is he here today? Miss Hoffman? Yeah, I got it. Hang on. Suffolk Environmental. It's 14 Millstone Lane. Good morning, Tennis everybody. Good morning. Is, um, is, is he coming on? Uh, I, I'm, I'm here, Bill. All right, you want to discuss it? Go ahead. Uh, we have a bulkhead replacement uh, in in place. Uh, we're going to design it to match the uh, aesthetic of the bulkhead directly to the east of this property. Um, it's in place, so um, everything's going to remain exactly where it stands. Uh, I submitted a revised plan to you on the 30th um, of November explaining that we're also going to have two 13-foot uh, returns on either side of the property as well. Uh, if there's any in questions. The, and the height is going to be the same as the neighbor to the south because he's put a new bulkhead in too. Yes. They all have to be the same height. Yes, yeah, so they will be the same height. Th then I'm fine with it. If you, anyone there's, else is fine with it? There's a timber cap. Just going back. Uh, yes, uh, timber top cap to just kind of uh, cover up some of the structural elements like the vinyl sheathing and whatnot. It's, it's untreated. Not, untreated. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a safety issue because with corrugated bulkheads, if you get too close to them, you could you fall. actually fall in. And uh, I, I know several, uh, you know, timber bulk, uh, timber caps have been placed on these uh I believe they can be up to 24 inches wide. It's in the rule book. Yep. Yeah, well, the, one of your regulations is 24 inch uh, cap for bulkheads. So Standard. 12, 12 inches is fine. Yep. yep. All right. I'm good with it, Billy. This fall. I'm good. Okay. Um, you just have to you're at the same height as the neighbors. Okay. Yep. Are we going to do special conditions with yeah, this so, one now? So yeah, well, uh, this is an easy one. I guess we can do this. If Bill's, Bill, you got any time? Yeah, go ahead. All okay. Right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to stop my share on this and then pull up another share of the special conditions. Uh, this is so when uh, Linnea uh, takes over for my leave you guys can go through the special conditions and make sure that she has the ones that you want on. Um, so this refers to bulkhead. So we'll, we'll, everyone can see my screen, correct? Yes. Right. Yep. 
So what you'll okay. have is the address of the permitted project, the application number and trustee area, and then she can just click on the ones that you want uh, put on there. So right, it's like this. Um, so you're just going to tell her which ones you want on. Okay, so the second one would be appropriate on the bulkhead refacing. Uh, actually, you have both bulkhead replace, replace uh, you have replacement on here. You have refacing, so no. So no, what gonna, there's not. What you characterize this as refacing or, or replacing? Refacing is, is nailing boards onto existing bulkhead. Are you, taking, are you removing this in kind in place? Yes. So none of that applies then. Okay. Right? Is it is it vinyl? Are they using vinyl? Well, it's you have bulkhead refacing, not replacing. So where is there in these pages here? So well, on, have... on, under bulkhead refacing, I wouldn't under bulkhead refacing is bulkhead shall be reconstructed in vinyl. The entire bulkhead shall be reconstructed using vinyl sheathing and untreated lumber in place and in kind. Is that that that's normally oh, one that I no. would put on there. That's not refacing, oh, that's that removal and replacement. I think what you have to put on there is you have to change the topic to bulkhead refacing or replacing. We could do There's that. Two yeah. different applications. Let's, let's not look, let's not look at the, the title. This is we just made this up, so we could change oh, okay. that. Fine. Okay. Uh, let's just look okay. at the, the ones for each one. This was just general. Okay. Uh, these are the actual conditions that are going to go on there. So are there any conditions within bulkhead refacing that might apply to this one? It could yeah, be no bulkhead change. refacing or replacement. No changes to height, right? <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And the last one that's going to be reconstructed in vinyl. Yeah. Yep. Clean and sand if, backfill. If you see. Yes. Clean sand? Okay. If you see something that you do want to change on that, you know, on the topics, then let me know just like you did. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to keep going down. Yep. There's no dock. There's no dewatering. Okay. No dredging. So general bulkhead conditions. Okay. Yeah. General on the bottom of page two, general bulkheading conditions 10 foot setback required for fertilized vegetation right. is that good bill yeah yes. i'm fine with it okay for cloth required on inside of bulkheading no that's check. that's only on standard wooden bulkheads we have tongue and groove the vinyl right. you don't need it right no uh, final grade that's that's uh, appropriate uh, and the backfill back that was redundant. in the other one yeah Okay. Uh, okay. So then the general permit conditions are this one notification of the office, right? Prior to the work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else on the general permit conditions? They all has fixed piers and uh, okay, so you have the uh, all approvals required. That's standard, right? And then new bulkheading is uh, the five foot passing way that goes in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the trustees liability uh, waiver. I guess that that's about it for that one, right? That page. Mm -hmm. And then uh, page four sets the road, the shell fishing, and uh, walkways. You're not uh, not proposing any walk. Bill, there's no walkway. No. It's just great, right? So then you all you have so then is the, so that's all good. All you have is the uh, ten foot buffer zone. No fertilizer used on grass. No catwalk in there anyway. Blah, blah, blah. That's about it. Okay, so that's that's essentially what you're gonna, you're gonna need to do. Um, for for me, I I know what to put on there. Linnea doesn't have the technical 
background to do that yet. Uh, so you guys for each application for the work session, uh, you can you can do that with her. Okay. Can, James, everybody, yeah. can I make one suggestion? I don't see anything that references a fence or, or unlock gate for pass and repass. Is that something that we should be including? Because, you know, as we know, people like putting gates and, and obstructions along the five foot passing way. So in your, these are, these are regulations that are straight from the, your regulation from okay. your book. Um, so this is the, the, the five, five foot pass, yep. pass, I guess would cover that. Um, there's nothing specific that says you can't put a gate. Uh, you guys always say that you can't put a you, uh, unlocked gate. Um, yes, they put like a gate that's unlocked and they could pass through it. Um, yep. That's something that you guys specifically say uh, during. And that's why we have them write it in their um, description, in their description. Uh, but th these are conditions that are directly in your blue book. Um, so that's why they're on here for you guys to choose. Right. Specific. I, have, I have one Joe, question. Can I ask I Joe real quick? Hey, Joe, are we OK with that? In, in what respect, Eddie? I just want to make sure that the public has the ability to pass and repass. And uh, we have it in the special conditions. It's And if I guess if we decide to allow a gate, it has to be an unlocking gate. And we would specifically reference that per the plans that were submitted, correct? Correct. And the way you have <clears throat> the condition here, a gate would be an exception to that general rule. So you would have to almost permit the gate for it to exist. Okay, so that would be in a special condition that we would discuss at the meeting. Right. I mean, if there was a legitimate reason for a self-closing gate that couldn't be locked, you would certainly be discussing it amongst yourselves, and it would be a, it would be an exception rather than a rule. It would be an, a, a special condition, if you will, to that particular permit. Okay. You can Thank also you. add a special condition if you guys agree. Add a special condition it might not be on here, but like you've done in the past, where you say. You know, please add this special condition to the 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 actual um, resolution. You could do that yes. during the work session. That's when you normally do it. Um, but it might not be on here. But you can ask for it to be put on. Normally, what we have them do is put that in the description so it's clear. Um, but you you this know you guys have more for convenience than for James. So you can you can put that these except you know can certainly but not limited to and you could even put a, a, a handwritten little thing at the bottom that says additional conditions that you could hand write in right essentially these you you normally guys you normally don't do this i i usually do this because i look at the plans and i read the plans and i make sure that these conditions you know correspond with the plans that were submitted however linnea can't do that so it, it's up to the trustees to make that decision on on what to put um, on for these conditions, essentially. If you have a special condition, just w what we can do is add, like Joe said, we'll add at the bottom other. And then if you have a spe you know, specific to that permit, we could do that and then add that in, you know, for the, for That's the, the best way to handle it. Because again, this is just a temporary measure until James returns. Exactly. Right. Hey, James. Yeah. When it says no fertilizer used on grass and buffer zone, should we um, say what kind of grass this is? Because I don't want people to think that when they read this, we could they can use green grass. So again, this is a condition that you guys have in your blue book rules and regulations, and that's you know we I can't change specifics on these regulations because that's what you have in your blue book. If okay. You, if you want to do that, you could do that during a bar hearing okay. and, and change it in your regulations. Like I said, these are, the, these are in the regulations already. Okay. So if, if you want to add a special condition that says that, um, and that's what, what we normally do is if they specify what they're putting in there, we have them write it in the uh, description. So it's part of the permit and says specifically, um, you know, beach grass to be in buffer zone. Um, then this goes on there and it's it, it clearly states that but until you guys change your actual regulation on buffers this is the this is the language you have in there right now all right thanks hey guys i gotta i gotta leave so i'll talk to you guys later good luck okay. later. Yeah, thanks.
Bye, Bill. Right, Thanks, Bill. Hmm. Okay. Hang on one minute. Okay. So uh, now we got Bill's uh, done. Um, is that, uh, I guess he's, he's ready to uh, move this along. So we're good with that. Okay. Right. We're all set with that, right, James? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to just, just bear with me. I'm going to go to, uh, back to GIS here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can do mine. If you want that 588 Dune Road, Campanella. Okay. All right, just let me know what you want me to pull up. Hey, so uh, Agina, is she on? DKR Shores? Yeah. I'm She's here. A... And my dog's going to bark in a minute. So just. Heads up. <laughs> okay. Um, so this had an old permit uh, done by another consultant. Um, they got a violation because Ron Bornish replaced some posts with some untreated, um, some treated material that was since corrected. Um, so basically I just need to, I wasn't sure what to do. So I asked James and he said, you know, just reapply uh, to legalize what's there, so. Okay. Does this applicant still have the stock work order on it or? No, they just had a violation um, and it was corrected. That was it. According to Sean Cambridge, the email that we received this morning, there is a flag for a stock work order on this property. Okay. And I didn't that the, the applicant must go to the building department to have this order lifted or they'll get a summons for working with the stop work order in place. Okay, it wouldn't be the building department, it would be code enforcement, um, but I yeah. can certainly do that. But I need a perm the permit first saying that, you know, showing that I acted. It, it may be a separate issue now. It could I be. I think it's I separate issues. Yeah, I, I could definitely do that, but I'd like to have something in my hands. Well, uh, okay, but um, you know the building department was uh, reluctant to uh, to not issue. They were ready to issue a permit on something, uh, as far as I know, on sixty five Cliff Bot Drive situation where we had had uh, requested all the agencies to uh, stop work on this, and uh, everybody continued on. So I don't know what I guess it applies to uh, to us, but not to them. <laughs> to anybody else. I don't I don't even have a copy of that. So this is the first I'm hearing of it. Mm -hmm. Well, if the stop work has nothing to do with this application that we're reviewing, it's, it should be single and separate outside of that. Oh, no, I'll, I'll put it on for, uh, you have, uh, what, two weeks to uh, figure it out. And no, actually, no, I do. I do have a copy of it. It says contact, contact trustee's office to obtain a permit. So that's what I did. Okay, so okay. Uh, I'm ready. and this I'm ready. looks like Alfred's signature. This isn't even building department. This is, you know, this looks yeah. like Bay Constables. Ready to move it forward. If it's, it gets straightened out in between that time, then it gets it's yeah. Just, so when I know, get a permit, what I'll do is I'll I'll send a copy of the permit to code enforcement for the copy of this notice. No one's not here to elaborate, so we got to wait. Well, I'm ready. I to think move we should just move it then. forward. If there's a problem, yeah. we can. Yeah, then you got like you said, you got on. weeks. You got but weeks. Yeah, table it. That's this all. Is, what's on the screen is the flag that pulls up when I when I pull up flags. So I don't know if this that too well is kind of small. Yeah. Yeah. No. But nothing, what? nothing in your permit is going to have anything to do with a plumber, is it? No, no. no it, that has that has nothing to do with me. Whatever's going on on the house, that's nothing to do with me. This is a violation issued by the Bay Constable. Yeah, I don't. I don't that I enclosed with the application. That's not. That has nothing to do with that building department stuff. Has nothing to do with this. Right. Exactly. Separation. 
yeah. court can do whatever it needs to clear, and then you deal with the building department as you guys see fit. Meaning yeah. the applicant, not the board. I'll let Robin know that there is a um, violation, uh, you know, pending with building department for house stuff that I have nothing to do with. Correct. Mm -hmm. This is the dock. This is a dock that was installed. And then it, it had been there. I think First Coastal put it in um, and then South Shore docks replaced the posts um, that were damaged in a storm but he used treated four, uh, six by sixes, or four, I'm sorry, four by fours. Um, so that had since been corrected. So this is a violation for trustees with Alfred. Yes. Those are the, so I just, you know, sent proof with the new untreated posts. So it has I, nothing to do with building apartment. I think we're gonna have to operate on our own because the building department is not honoring uh, when we issue a, a violation. Well, building department doesn't regulate docks. This is for the dock. No, I understand that. I'm talking about usually you hold up on things until things are cleared up. You know. Yeah, uh, it's apples yeah, and oranges. This application is over trust property. It's not even on the homeowner's property. It's on our. It's on our own water land. This is in the water. This is all the dock that exists from high water seaward. This has nothing to do with the actual property or the right, house. Well, it seems that we're all on the same page. Let's advance it. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Okay. I'm staying, I'm staying on. I'm going to stay on. Okay. Next one is Erica Bad on 608 Dune Road. And she's got a lot. Yeah. So um, you yeah, if you want to pull that up, houses, you know, right out there, deck cantilevers actually over the water. I actually have a DEC permit. They issued uh, no questions um, because uh, I have to go out, you know, in front. Yes, you cannot. You cannot wait, you, you can't do a uh, in kind in place on this particular one. The the, uh, the piles, unfortunately, the piles are very close to the edge of the uh, of the. Um, uh, in the in the returns, I did uh, specify um, in place because. You know, right. what do I it. can do in place, I will. That way, yes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But not in the front of the house. Right. Now I can't do it right in the front. No. James, could we impossible. see the aerial, please? Or the plans? Here's the aerial. Let me know if you want to see the plan. Okay. Some of the photos too, you'll see like the cross section the photos. Pretty. Yeah, you'll you have a photo the of the house, uh, the house that's on, you know, the bulkhead right underneath see, the, the deck. deck. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the deck actually can leers over the water. So it's impossible to do it in kind in place. The whole house would pull in. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, we lost quite a bit of land all along this whole shoreline here. So, uh, <clears throat> the only question I had was provide the uh, 10 foot non turf. Uh... Oh, no, no, I'm confusing that with something else. Never yeah, mind. I think there's already a buffer there. I think I specified it's just a go, you know, yep. back. So she's got stone, which is consistent. Right. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, this is one of those situations you really can't uh, do much about uh, the, since the Erosion has taken place right up to the bulkhead. The only suggestion I would have would be to take those stones and put them as uh, those armoring stones in front of the new bulkhead. Re, re, uh, you know, remove those and put them in front. She does have a couple of stones out there right now. Um, yeah, all along. Uh, all along. See it right there. Yeah, they'll they'll go back. You know where they were mm -hmm. after it's done. Now. Uh, same height? Yes. Okay. The height seems adequate for uh, the situation. They they actually put uh, two six by sixes on top yeah. of okay. So you're essentially the what you're doing is you're you're uh, putting a new bulkhead in front, but you're um, 
mimicking the height that they have put on themselves. The DEC would probably allow them an 18 inch on top of that anyway. So this is 12 inches. So, so, so we're looking to reconstruct but, the original bulkhead plus the additional two, the two whalers. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. It's so six by six. So they're, uh, you know, five and a half inches. So uh, the 11 and they have an inch and a half on the, on the board on the top is 12 and a half inches. So you're increasing it by, by 12, basically 12 inches. Like just, it's easy to put down in the regulations. Yeah, I mean, in the application that it's uh, uh, matches the existing height of the bulkhead as it is right now. Now this, this particular structure basically jets out into the water. Is there any uh, ability for people to pass and repass at high tide? On top of this bulkhead, uh, yes. actually, there is. There's stairs on either side. Believe it or not. Okay, that was my. That There's was actually my stairs question. on either side. Hey, uh, okay. If you leave this photo up, as you can see right down, there's a drop down. You see those? Uh, it's terraced. Yeah. Yes. It actually goes down to the beach, and you can walk across the front of the bulkhead, or you can walk across the top of the bulkhead. Yeah, and okay, the, on the other side, there's a right of way that also has stairs going into the water too. Um, yes, so that, that's, side. The, that's the house that's on the street. Uh, that's uh, for uh, uh, what's the address of this place? It's six oh eight A is the front house, which has a a walkway that runs. See that walkway? Walkway that has right. stairs. Yeah, that go right down. So you literally could just walk on the walkways and. So you just... can either yeah. so you can either walk across the front of the bulkhead. You can walk up this walkway. There's another walkway that goes east and west, goes and then goes down the driveway to a set of stairs down to the beach again, or you can walk across the front. Yeah. Okay. There's two two ways actually to get from point A to point B. Good. Yep. So I'd like to move this one forward. Eric, can we do yes. uh, conditions for this one? So just to. Okay. Get a little more uh, practice. Yeah, I discussed with Jessica, instead of doing every single one of these to get the board uh, uh, up to speed on these, we do one per each uh, trustee. Yeah. So you okay. want to do one for you here? All right, we'll do it for this one here. So we don't have any boat slips, if you want to put it up. Yeah, I'm pulling it up now. What did I do there? Just give me a minute here. Sorry, I just uh, something on. All right, you know what? Let's move on. I, I got rid of it. I get to find it again. So, oh, okay. no, here it is. Here it is. Got it. Come on. Okay. Okay. So boat slips is out. Bulkhead section. Um, no changes to height. Okay. Uh, old bulkhead will remain in place while new is built. That's fine. Clean sand. Uh, bulkhead uh, constructed in vinyl. Right. Do you want, no want the clean sand or do you want the, the other rock one because they have rocks back there? You would need rocks here, otherwise you're just going to oh. scour out. Uh, no, right now there's uh, actually uh, pea gravel uh, there in front uh, as a... Uh... Right, so there's a, there's a condition further down that says clean sand or gravel. Uh, okay. Which is backfill consisting of seen sand, sand or gravel only. That's good. So you, I'll put that one in. But let me go back up to up to here. Okay. Right, so you're good with those. It's a little redundant here. I mean. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> okay. 
like I said, it's in your blue book. So okay. Um, okay. And then, so, uh, okay. Where are you? Dredging, Doctor Sleep. What page are you on here now, Doctor Sleep? So now we're down to the end of page two. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I guess a 10 foot setback required because somebody else might buy the house and tear that out and put grass in or something. Okay, so leave that one in. Uh, page three of four. You don't need to filter cloth. Uh, final grade, uh, put that in. Yeah. Uh, backfill grant gravel only. Um, that's about it for that. I like this checklist you guys did. Thanks. Uh, so general permit conditions, notify the uh, office within 24 hours. Um, okay. All approvals. <laughs> yep, all approvals. Okay, new bulkheading, the uh, five foot passing way, and the uh, liability damage waiver. And then the in kind bulkheading within 18 inches of the wall. Okay, so then page four there's no roads, no shell fishing. And um, I guess the ten foot buffer. Well, that's that's for the walkway. Okay, that's just for the walkway. Okay, yeah, that's, that falls under walkway, so we don't need that. Okay, which I always thought was weird because uh, you. So oh, that looks like about it for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. One other thing, uh, James. Should we add it, uh, the last thing on the list here? that uh, once the project is done that you have to send a notice of completion into the office to get a final inspection. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> that should be on there. Doesn't it say, it, it yeah. says that somewhere, doesn't it? For general permit conditions, the first check. Yeah, yeah. you already got that out of my office within 24 hours. Yeah. That's commencing completion. All right, yeah, yep. it's in there. Because evidently people don't read this at all. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Completely. Yep. Okay. You think? I agree. <laughs> Great. Um, just save it, and she's gonna have these filled out, and she'll go to each one. Um, I just didn't know which ones you were gonna pick, so I'm just gonna save it real quick. It's uh, six forty nine. to this. This is uh, Hampton Close. Yep. Well, 12 Hampton Close. Okay, so this is to, uh, is um, First Coastal on? Billy Mac or uh, Aaron? No, Billy Mac was here, but it's not here now. Oh. Okay. Well, let's go ahead with it. It's uh, to renew the permit and to modify that also is to eliminate the placement of stones and instead install two rows of state core biologs and three rows of natural shell filled mesh bags, 190 lineal feet along seaward edge of marsh, 180 foot lineal foot along seaward edge of marsh. <sighs> Let's go to some pictures here. This is uh, excessive. This is what, Eric? Excessive. So they, they had originally got approved for putting rock um, along the... 
um, the area. And I guess they didn't do it. And now they just, they don't want to do the rocks anymore. They want to do the bio coral, coral logs. Uh -huh. uh, flip is, the picture if you can. Yep. Is this on, is this on the open bay or is this on in the little Doug Canal? Money boat. On, on the open bay, on Money Bob. The Doug, no, the Doug Canal is completely bulkheaded. Where the problem arises is right at the end of the canal. There's a sh small little dig out of the marsh. I don't even know if it shows on there. But do they have any pictures of the, is He's that it for the pictures? Yeah, it's it? the only pictures. Oh. Let me see if there's an older pictures. Uh, no, these are the same pictures. Would That's the aerial it. show more? Uh, okay, so so look at this here now. All right, see where he has where he has the cursor right there. Yeah, the yes. little area right there that there's some some washout. That's it, and there. Uh, so the rest of the shoreline is completely stable. I can't see, and and he's got at least a hundred and fifty feet of natural marsh all along there. I don't see any big reason for doing anything to this property at all. Core logs, rocks, shell bags, anything. Maybe at the very most, a core log or two right by the end of that bulkhead. I mean, there a... the... oh, sorry. Eric, is he putting the shell bags in to potentially catch oyster spat that could be floating in the area? Is that the reason? I don't know. So to eliminate the placement of stones, they had originally wanted stones all along this whole thing, but I, apparently they have this. This okay. Maybe we need Billy. Oh, no, uh, to be... Yeah, I'm I would gonna, like a little further I'm explanation put, I'm, on this. I'm going to put this on on hold because I'm I'm going to have to go down and take my own pictures, and bring it back to the board. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. And, and one thing that has to be recognized in an open bay situation like this dealing with the uh, koi logs, they float. Yep. They're like giant sausages that pull up. I mean, I in, in Western Shinnecock Bay and, and Eastern Shinnecock Bay, they've broken loose several times. So, you know, these things are not something you can just stake down and they'll stay there. They're like giant buoys that pick up with storms and just move. Yes, I know. I've, I've dealt with it twice. Oh, you have, yeah. <laughs> Within weeks, right? Yes. Or a week, a week after placement. Yeah, they're they were floating around the bay. Yep. Conic Estuary Partnership and Cornell Cooperative Extension Marine Division just did a um, a Zoom discussion and a site visit, and in their uh, opinion, core logs should be used just as temporary. So. Maybe they, if we can discuss they are this temporary. further. They only last about three or four years and then they decompose. Right. It's something right. that you take and put a, a tow up above the high tide mark at the toe of a bluff and pin them down. And then they have seed in them and they basically grow up the bluff with shrubberies and, and plants and create a root system. That's this the reason for them. This may not be the best use for them, but no. let's see. Let's see if well, we come. No. What, what basically they're for is for ponds and small creeks and things like that, where they would, you know, as, as uh, Ed was saying, they plant some seeds in them and they start growing up. But for open base situations, they just don't work. It, wherever there's tidal indida indication in whatever. Inundation. Inundation. That's not a good place to put them. Mm -hmm. no. And fetch. Major yes. fetch. It's better to put up some temporary boards with some stakes in them and then plant behind that, you know, something like that. Because these things float all over the place. We've also used living shoreline. Well, the, with the situation. shell bag, that's what it sounds like he's trying to transition into. Yeah. Um, but, but, it, sounds but like, I it sounds like he's trying to do the shell bags, bags to break up any of the wave fetch and then that essentially would drop the wave action on the 
quarry logs that are planted with the alternative flora so that it could potentially bring back the the, the areas that have been eroded um, with with a more natural shoreline. That's uh, it's what it seems to me when I'm looking up, looking at it, right. um, what they're trying to do. Um, okay, but if you look right. at the problem, Line the way they had the red property line is uh, is on there is actually built out beach in some areas. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, there's <laughs> definitely you know, and I don't I don't know if they're they're proposing it over here. Let me uh, I could pull up the plans to see where they're. That's proposing. all right. Let's let's go on because we put this on hold. We'll get more information on it. Okay. okay. Yeah, it seems like they're just certain areas they're proposing it. But all right, yeah. uh, let's move on. Okay. We need more pictures. We got that. All right, the next one on Cricket Path. I'm going to put that on hold. Also, I have to discuss this with the uh, with the uh, the applicant. Uh, I haven't been able to get in touch with him. Uh, they want to put out a longer than necessary, I believe, dock in this particular area, plus a boat lift and. <clears throat> Yeah, I believe he sent an email stating that he wants to put it on hold as well. He's that he's uh, working on getting better plans or something like that. Yeah, if he's going to put a boat lift in, the thing has to be drastically shortened. You don't need something 100 feet out with a, a boat sticking out there. The whole purpose of the boat lift and, and that area is very shallow. And uh, the traditional uh, length of docks is, is, is 50 foot at the, uh, at the max. And the reason why it's 50 foot and not 25 feet or so is because we have to get the boats a little further out in this area than normal because there's a tremendous amount of tidal action that comes in there that, that fetch. If you have the boat too close to the bulkhead, you see, you see that uh, lighter area? That's all flats. Mm -hmm. And at some point, and in the winter time, you're down to, uh, you can walk across the front of those bulkheads sometimes on a, on a low tide. And if you keep the boat too close, the boat gets, uh, gets slammed. So we've, we've kept it to a minimum down there of about 50 foot and they're proposing a uh, 100 foot long with a, cat, with a uh, boat lift at the end. And so if you wanna put a boat lift in, then you put a 25 foot in and you get the boat up off the, up out of the wave action and you're fine. There's no reason to build a long dock and then put a boat lift on it. So, all right, so that's on hold anyway. Stacy Drive. Stacy Drive. Okay, who's this now? Uh, this was- Shoreline bulkheading. Shoreline, are they on? Kristen Trovich. He's coming up. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Okay. You want to describe the project? Hello, Moto. Oh. Okay. Okay, so we're just ripping out and removing what's there, the, the boardwalk in kind. Mm-hmm. We're gonna extend the gravel behind the boardwalk, the buffer, we're gonna extend it to four feet. I think right now it's at two feet, which will give you the 10 foot buffer behind. And then they want to do a platform ramp and floating dock. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was in a canal. Yes, and it's following all of the neighboring uh, properties right. that are there be at the same height. The bulkhead has to be at the same height as all the, as the adjacent properties. They're all right, we're not doing anything with the bulkhead. We're just doing the boardwalk. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> right, put up some pictures you have uh, up there. Okay. So it's gonna be at the same elevation of, as the boardwalk is now. It's just, he wants to replace it with Ippy. It's damaged in some areas and failing, rotting right. underneath, so we're gonna, replace that and there was a dock when he moved there we're gonna rip take that out and we're gonna just replace with a new dock cantilever platform safely with a ramp to access the dock 
How wide is that boardwalk, the walkway? I'm sorry? Six feet. How wide is the boardwalk? The, uh, the, walkway? the boardwalk now is six feet and we're replacing it in kind as six feet. So we need a buffer behind that then? That's why there's a two foot gravel buffer there already and we're extending it even additional two feet to make it four feet. Right. Can we do anything with vegetated, um, with the vegetation, with natural vegetation? As of right now, they just want the gravel and it's in the regulation that they have the choice to use the gravel or vegetation. And right now he just wants gravel. So he's aware then that he's doing nothing to mitigate the effects on the waterway with his green lawn that's fertilized and irrigated. Well, he's actually he extending would... it two more feet landward, which yeah, is given right now, feet. there was only two feet. He's now extending it to four feet. Yeah, he's doubling right. his, he's doubling. He's doubling, his he's giving, he's making it so the, you know, he's following the guideline of the buffer of giving the additional four, two feet. Right, but rocks don't absorb nutrients. Well, we're following what's in the blue book. Yes. And it says gravel planting. Yes. And that's what he would like to do. Preston, when he does the uh, replacement of the gravel, is he going to trench it down, say, like a foot or so, so that he has a lot more ability for the water, the runoff to penetrate in that yes. area? Yes, and then he'll they'll use that filter fabric to put underneath. So we'll trench it down further. Okay. All right. I'm okay with it. I don't have the rest of the board okay I think it's with fine. It? I think it's fine. Okay. Ed? Yeah, I mean, you're getting, it's per the blue book. Like I said before, if we want to make all these other changes, we should have a public hearing and go over the specifics of grasses and vegetation and stuff like that. That way we can recommend it as per the blue book, not just basically ask. Okay. It might be time to revisit that again. Okay. But there is value to pushing thusly a buffer you know, you're, you're 10 feet away from the waterway. And as Eric was pointing out earlier, you're not chemically treating it. You know, you, you, it, you're not mowing right up to it. It's pushing it away. And it does allow it when it does run off to then go into the soils there and not mm -hmm. just keep run off right into the bay. So it's not a terrible project. It's a good project. They doubled, they doubled the buffer. Um, you know they're not they're not watering and, and fertilizing or chemically treating for you know ticks or whatever on this other vegetation so there's pros and cons to everything bottom line is you pushed they're pushed back 10 feet from the water so it's it's not it's okay all right i'm okay with moving it forward so let's do that um scott can you um go over your stuff uh, i have to take a really important call here for a minute thank okay. you trustees have a nice day stuff. Okay. Me too. I've got, uh, is, is Kevin Springer? There's one more on for Eric Flander, uh, town Sound of Southampton. Oh, yeah, I see that. He does. He's got oh, Southampton oh, Town, 1190. He's gonna, he, he wants you to go on to Scott's. He's, he's got to take care of something. Okay. So, so we're going to go to Mike. Move on to Scott's and we'll go back to the, um, the one is, that Is he Kevin here? From Dynamic Legal? Yeah, he's coming on. Great, because th these are a couple of applications that we've been working on uh, work session level for quite a while with the board. Uh, had had uh, some requests of uh, Kevin, and I'm hoping that maybe we can clear these up today. First one's 12 Port Elizabeth Drive. You have the cover sheet there, James? Yep. Yeah, Kevin, are you there? Yes. All right. 25 foot catwalk with flow through decking and walk through stairs at the bulkhead, all materials to be untreated. Yes, this is Kevin, the one you... that was on for the last time that we, you asked for a little bit of an update. You wanted the bulkhead height, which is eight foot here. Uh, high tide mark is at four feet. And then you want an approximate number of the stairs, which would come out to eight or nine.
Was there was there questions on the railing entirely? Well, you know, yes, the rail so we, we would ask Max, um, actually, which I should I forgot to change up, but we will we can do the rope or we can go the other way because as you, you guys had mentioned, you didn't want um, so many of the railings that way. You prefer them the other way, which is fine. Horizontal is com compared to perpendicular. Yeah. I'm going to go with the, the, the minimal needed railing so we don't yes. mess exactly. up the view shed with all these spindles. Yeah. Right? Correct. How about the rest of the board? We've been on this thing for several sessions here. It looks like a good project now. It's much better with the shorter to... catwalk. Right. And, and, and the bit. railings also? Yep. As long as that railing has allows for view shed. Right. So you, you're going to amend. Rope. Sorry, you, you say something, Ann? Good. No. You're going to amend that uh, cover sheet to indicate uh, clearly specifying what that railing is going to be? Yes. I can do that today or tomorrow. Okay. And the plans. Yeah, and the plans. Yeah, no, obviously, yeah. Right, so we'll advance pending the plans on cover sheet, removing the railings. Uh, I'd say that's fair. Okay. Okay. Reconfigurating the railings. Right, Re reconfiguring the railings. All right. Yeah, eliminate the spindles. Do you want to do the conditions to... on this one, Scott, or do you want to you do them you on do another that. one? You can run down the conditions. If you want to run down the conditions on this one, go ahead. Okay. Hang on, let me uh, just write these notes real quick. Sorry, James. Yep. This this one's a little different than the other one too, so it'd be a good one to do. Yeah, it's a dock. Okay. Exactly. No problem. Okay. Everyone can see that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's small, but it's okay. There you go. There it is. That's better. Okay. So no bulkhead, no concrete bridge. We'll get to the dock here. All right, so just let me know which ones you want on there. Well, what's relevant here? Uh, Second one. Yeah, posts supporting dock must not exceed four what, by what six. What was the posts? Is it four what, by four? What were the posts you had? Definitely the one for handrails. The one for handrails for sure. Yep. Yeah. And the last one, right? Well. Did you request that? Twenty-six inches over plants. I don't think there's plants under. No, there. there's no there's plants, plants under there. Twenty-six over the water. At low tide, it's actually just sand. Okay. Yep. Steps for passing. I think you put those on there, right? Yeah, he, he's got that. The next one too, right? Yeah. Um, Okay, so it's not a docking facility. No, not dredging, not dune restoration. No dune guard, emergency dune. So general bulkhead conditions, no. No. General permit conditions, so. Notify office. He's doing that, right? He's doing the. Yeah. Uh, what uh, steps? Second, right? Yep. Yeah. Second one's there. Yep. He's doing that too, right? Yep. Not that one. It's not that. No. no. All per all approvals required. Yep. All right. So not no okay. bulking. That's it, right? 
uh, walkways. So you so want to do um, catwalk, right? The light penetrating decking you're using. That's yeah, he's doing. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's pretty much it. Cool. Right. Right. Good yep. exercise, a little different than the prior ones. Perfect. Let me just save it. You good? The next one's Kevin's too, right? Yes. Um, yes. 20 tarpon? Yeah. yeah, 20 tarpon. This is one with the planters, right? Yes. And it was a little confusing on the drawings and the descriptions, and we, we needed to get it all to match up. Yes, originally the well, the previous owner um, had it all as decking, and then we had done well, we had an approved plan, um, but then he did not follow that plan, and then since then sold to the new customer here, and we put it in with the new drawing as for what the old one. And not been. Is it? Oh, sorry. Okay. 12 so, by 7. Yeah, essentially, he needed a survey that matched the um, what you're actually legalizing. There were some differences yes, in the correct. survey. Uh, and he did provide us that um, with the, the planters that are 10 by 25 and 10 by. Uh, whatever that is nine i believe so, so now it all matches everything matches now right so that and that's what we needed because it wasn't nothing seemed to jive over there and just so you know these are the this is what the the planters look like uh with the um with the native grasses right so they're flush with the walkway correct yep okay yes. they're more like an area that's planted in exactly the, okay so I, I think he's good now he's i think now that all the plans and the drawings all match up i think he's fine now yep so we'll advance that one i would advance it yeah he's he's got it all he's addressed cool. everything the board asked him to address so i think this one's good to go sounds good So we'll move on to 27 Ogden. And we're back to DKR Shores. Hi, I'm still here. So this one had a permit a really long time ago. Um, and regardless of the um, notices I had sent them, it's complicated. The contractor was supposed to be in charge of stuff and things got overlooked and the house construction got taken over by a new company. Um, so basically it's forcing me to reapply for basically a bulkhead that's done already um, because they didn't uh, finish the house. And so they didn't finish the um, planting and the project in its entirety. So this um, is partially as built. Yeah, the bulkhead's done, but like I said, the planting's not done. Right. So was it done prior to its expiration, the part that was done? Or after? Bulkhead, yes. The bulkhead was done. And, you know, I told the client, I said, I really don't know if they're going to charge you all the fees all over again. I'll see what I can do. Um, you know, I feel bad for them because, you know, the contractor didn't pass along the message. Um, you know, and it's kind of screwing them. Was there a notice of completion sent in for the bulkhead? No. Carl so didn't do it done. because, well, yeah, because the planting wasn't done and we're not allowed to send in completions until the buffer is planted. So this is not going to pass. So it was right. an incomplete project. Right, right. right. So it was not completed. The buffer was not done. So. It's totally up to you. Well, it could certainly advance, obviously, but I think that we're going to have to speak to uh, council relative to what the appropriate situation is to do relative to the fees. You got to pay the fees. That. 
Yeah. I, you know, I appreciate that. Thank you. It, it, it's going to boil down to maintaining consistency in the board's policies. I mean, the project. Do, do we want to charge a price for the dimensional but, fees of the uh, bulkhead? That's the question, right? Yeah. And that's going to be about consistency and legality. And, you know. That's where we need our attorney. Exactly. Sean, do, attorney. Sean, do you I'm, want to weigh in on this? I would. If Sean's not here. They have recourse against the contractor on a number of lines, including whatever additional fees you're going to levy. May not be their fault, but they're responsible for his conduct. And again, they can seek indemnification from him in court if they need to. But for so, consistency, we should be levying them. Right. So, so we, so we have it. to make consistency. We, 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 can't, we can't deviate from consistency. Right. So the project's fine to move forward, to get approved, but you know, we need to maintain consistency. I mean, it is what it is. Oh. It, exactly. <laughs> otherwise, it's going to create a my problem fault. downstream. And we can't create a problem downstream. So right. just, to be, just to be clear, as-built fee is to be charged, and the regular dimensional fees should be charged as well. Okay. 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 That's, that's all that I have. You got uh, trustee right. runners up. We have... You you want to start with the one that's uh, DKR while she's here? Yeah, we're going to Penny Lane uh, Enterprises, LLC, 24 Penny Lane. Hi. Okay, I'm still here. Um, this is a basic bulkhead reconstruction. Bulkhead's in pretty poor shape. There's a lot of sinkholes. It's kind of yes. dangerous. Um, but he would like to fill in the very small boat slip that's um, partially, if not most, filled in already. And so far, I have approvals from Department of State. You want to see photographs or drawings? Yes, yes, please. Photographs, please. Okay. At four. Yeah, it's basically a launching ramp. There's like no vegetation in it. It's just a cutout. So we're really, you know, not losing no net loss of a wetland by filling it in. Uh, only thing that we can gain is a hopefully to put some kind of a good buffer there around it uh, in order to uh, have mitigation for this. So agreed. I mean, it's, it's literally falling into the bay. Um, yeah, the bulk does have a whaler that was a, a six by six that was placed on top of it. Um, a lot of old concrete rubble and stuff that was placed behind the bulkhead to stop, you know, the erosion, which really didn't. So basically we're looking to, Take the bulkhead out, replace it. Um, are we going to have a height change or no? Because I believe that um, uh, eight inches to match the adjacent bulkhead only. It's yeah, very the, small. yeah it's not. basically the eight inches on top of the whaler that's there, or eight inches on top of the original bulk. You see the bulk. Um, it's eight inches on top of the whale. Eight inches. So it's going to be uh, basically. Uh, 12 inches higher than it was originally permitted. Um, yeah. And you know, what is going to be placed well behind the stone? Stone? Yeah. Is, uh, being that we're filling in a, a potential wetland, is there any chances of getting some uh, beach grasses on the. Uh, Can I do it in stretch? stone? What's that? The, Can I do it in the stone? Can I put beach grass inside the stone? Yes. Okay. Done. I think that would be a make it a good project. Okay. So are we good to move this forward then? Uh, so just Gina, can you update that cover sheet and plan showing that? Yeah. Uh, and send that in as soon as possible. All right. All right. So we can move it up then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. Yep, Eric, you too. Eric, you know. Eric, Eric, you're still there. Good luck. He'll do right. the form. He's not here. Do you want to do the form on this I, one, Eddie? Got back here. Had to make a couple of calls. All right. What's up? You didn't want to do that form. You didn't want to do the condition form on oh, that yeah. one. Eddie? Um, is there another one that I can do maybe on uh, the uh, TP LLC, which is uh. I believe it's the old Jackson's Marina, which yeah. is more complicated. Just, that one was a little different. I just thought that would be, uh, you know, whatever. 
Well, right. I, the other one is like uh, floating dot. I mean, is more way more complicated. I mean, if you want to. Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. I just while we're doing the exercise, one per. I just did, trying to mix it up, different stuff, you know. So yeah, but I, I no problem. Okay. Are we going That's back right. to you, Eric? Okay. Just to, yeah, just uh, just to remind you that we have um, you know a, a short executive session for a couple of minutes. Uh, and that started at 11. We're a little bit behind on that. So, um, okay. So this okay. one here, this is real easy. This was submitted by the town. The CPF bought it. It's a nice piece of property on Flanders Bay. There's a lot of extra stuff there. It doesn't really have to be in here. And they want to put two catwalk sections in uh, within tidal wetlands, but it's, it's uh, above the high watermark. And uh, I don't see that we have any jurisdiction in this area. And uh, I don't see, they want to turn it into a nature walk with a, uh, a viewing platform at the end of this. Uh, essentially is a, a high piece of property that goes juts out into the bay with uh, extensive marsh systems on each side. It's pretty wild. As you, as you can see there, see that? No, it's a nice piece of property there. Oh, there, right. Be they're taking away, I mean, nothing to do with us, but they're demolishing the house, removing yes, the septic, and then yeah, putting, everything putting, putting in a trail out. and two catwalks. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, Public uh, access. When I went down there, it's uh, it's mucky at some times. It's uh, the, when the groundwater comes up, it's, uh, I don't know, it's not going to be anything big. So it's not, not really in our jurisdiction. So I just say we're, we're fine with it. There would be no fee involved anyway. And the, the environmental division will be handling all the all the permits and everything necessary on the on the upland. So I'm confident that they'll do a good job on that. Okay. Okay. Sounds so good. Eric, Eric, you want to advance it? Do you want them to remove the stuff that's not even close to their Well, I don't know whether we have to whether uh, it really Or do you want us just tell us tell them that they don't need approval from us? Yes, I would say that. Okay, we're, so we're, we're not advancing. We're just gonna say that it's not in essentially not in our jurisdiction. Uh, yeah. Or no. No. What do you think about that, Joe? You know what? For the sake <clears throat> for the sake of jurisdiction, you saying that you don't have jurisdiction. I, I would much rather get some sort of. Oosh. You don't have jurisdiction. I. I I, I can go either way, but in light of the things that have happened with the conservation department there in the uh, the past year, ugh. well, it's then got, just uh, just give them. Not in there. It says catwalk within tidal wetlands. Tidal, it yeah, that's on the, the description. Well, that that's debatable. I mean, uh, I didn't it's, think it's all above mean high water. It, it it's above mean high water, James. I was going to ask if we could see the plans for it. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be helpful. They're they're very large, so I'm gonna have to zoom in. Not a, it's not a situation where I mean, look, look it was it was high tide, and I, my feet didn't get wet. Okay, so <laughs> uh, let me get a better. Uh... I mean, we can give the narrative of it that it's above our jurisdiction as per this. Plans submitted. It's, well, it's either uh, it's either that, or we just approve the, the section of the plan, uh, approve it, and have done. With I would it. I would do that because just like these yeah. other projects that are marginal that end up being in our jurisdiction. I, okay, I, that's I fine. Think maybe safer yeah. for the board. Okay, the I mean, portion of the tidal wetlands we're going to approve. Let's move it forward then. Okay. Move it forward to approve it, and if they didn't need the permit, oh well. So okay. And no we'll, there's no there's no fee, but it eliminates the ambiguity. Yes, and then we'll wait the fee. Okay. We'd so rather have we'd actually well, be better because we'd rather have them come in on all the projects to shore adjacent and exactly. Uh, I, I think that's what we've been saying for the last year and a half. Exactly. All right. So to just it. to be clear, we want them to remove the demolition stuff, the ADA parking, stormwater retention basins. We just want them to keep the raised wooden catwalk sections within yeah. tidal road wetlands and, and the next line as well. And that's it on the cover sheet. And you got right. to advance that. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's, yep. That's the 
this position to take with it, I think. Okay, so they can do that. All they have to do is white it out, actually, and then so uh, let's move it forward. Okay. Then, uh, and then they can delete that. Okay. Okay. That concludes what I have. Uh, Ed, you've done all yours? No, nope. I have. I just started on okay. one of them. Okay. All right. Two tenths LLC, two TP Lane, Suffolk Environmental Planning. Two TP Lane. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Is Suffolk Environmental here? Surfside. Surfside, Surfside Dab sorry. Uh, I believe she sent an email. Did she just, did she send an email or am I? Yes, she did. She sent an email saying like last week saying that she couldn't make it. She had a conflict of interest, um, but I told her to coordinate directly with Ed. Okay. And I think I see, see you guys on it. So she, well, I mean, so she's, she is the bulkhead? It's a bulkhead replacement. Right. Are there bulkheads on the adjacent properties? What height yes, are they? It's all, it's all bulkheaded in there, um, in the back here. It's across from Jackson um, Prime Marina. Right. Um, it's in the back corner here. It's a very low, it's a very old low bulkhead. We just approved Jackson's Marina right across to raise up their bulkhead, I believe 12 inches because of the flooding. And they're doing a buffer. And they're doing the buffer. Um, I, I mean, I think it's a good project. I mean, I, I've been down I, I think it is too. multiple times. I mean, I can give the narrative. They're removing the existing wood bulkhead, which is uh, mostly, you know, treated lumber, and replacing it with shore guard vinyl bulkhead, fronting Abe's Cove with a return on the western end of the property. The new vinyl bulkhead will be a minimum 12 inches higher. Basically, that would be uh, to the bulkhead to the west of it, similar, a total of 109 linear feet, uh, 89 feet on the face, 28 feet on the western return, 11.44 uh, cubic yards of clean sand to be backfilled behind the bulkhead to uh, the existing wood retaining wall. Beach grass will be planted 12 inches on Santa uh, to the existing wood retaining wall within 12, uh, within 10 feet of the uh, landward of the bulkhead for the entire run of the bulkhead uh, return um, and return, 109 feet total. All wood would be uh, untreated and all fasteners would be hot dip. Basically, it's what we've been asking for uh, and most of the projects basically remove the structure, somewhat of an up, uh, you know, lifting it up, uh, you know, similar to what we did across the uh, waterway on Jackson's um, and allowing them to replace it uh, basically 12 inches higher and do, uh, you know, a a beach grass planting along the whole entire stretch. So I think it's a really good project, basically. It's, you know, it's, it's better than what's there now. Way better, I think it could advance myself. So, I mean, it's everything that we would ask for. Is, so this, is this the bulkhead that, every, that a few other people have been uh, talking about and made site inspections? Yes. Okay. So I think it's a really good project. Uh, basically, it's, you know, it's going to, raising it up slightly is going to reduce the amount of runoff going into the, into the uh, Apes Cove. And, uh, you know, basically it's removing a uh, bulkhead that's been there for the last, you know, you know, almost 40 years probably. 
So I think mm-hmm. it's a really good project. I don't see any so wetland adaptation. <laughs> I can move it forward. All right. Yep. All right. So we'll advance that. Uh, Ed, do you want to do the conditions on this one? Yeah. Why don't we do the checklist on? Is there? Yeah. I was hoping to do a different one, but we'll do it on this. You one. want to do a different one? No, we'll do it on this one. Okay. Undo these. That last one. Okay. So bulkhead refacing here. Yes. Oh, that clean sand will be placed there. For the grass. Vinyl right. Vinyl right, yep. There's no dock proposed. Okay. We'll go down to dock facility. No uh, no dredging. No dune restoration. No dune guard. No dune restoration. Just general bulkhead condition. Yep. Well, it's going to be used vinyl, so we don't need to filter cloth. Frontal grade must be a minimum of four inches below the wall. Okay. Basically, you're going to use sand or gravel, basically. uh, That's what's there now, but they're going to use sand and then plant it. Right. That was up. We did the sand one up there. Yep. And then I can do the inspection before it's backfilled. I mean, that's an easy one. It's right in the area there. So anyway, uh, do you want to do that? Yep, I'll do that one. Yes. Okay. And then general permit conditions. Yep. That one there. Notify the office. All approvals. Okay. New bulkhead. Passing way, yep. Okay. Insurance liability, yes. Okay. And I think that's it. All right. So we're good on that then. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Lawrence K. Benson, 47A Lynn Avenue, Dynamic Legal. Is Kevin on? Kev's here still. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Kevin. Good morning. All right. There was an original permit and we're modifying it uh, for a ramp and a float. Uh, we, uh, pilings. we had this one on for work session. Uh, he never, he didn't have the survey with the dock or the proposed dock with the sounding. So he did yep. provide us with that. Um, so I could bring that up. Please do. <laughs> guys. And it's at 30 inches of water. Yep. It's float meets the pier line with this other uh, permitted. Yep, it's cowboy. it's identical to the dock next door. We have the water depth. Um, uh, the dock will be removed. Dock and ramp will be removed as a seasonal dock and ramp stored up land during the winter season. So uh, it's hey, James. We got everything we need. It's off the extended property line per our regulations. So it's pretty much good to go. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
guys good? Yep, I'm good, brother. Yep. Okay. So the last one is 176A Bay. Yep. The Vienna Family Revocable Trust. Is uh, Clay Cofield on Environmental Enviro Permits, Inc.? Yep, he's coming on. So you guys had previously discussed this, uh, I believe, and or he had he had submitted revised plans as per Trustee Warner. Yes. So I'll let him speak to it when he gets here. I'll put your video on, Clay. Ed, what do, what do you want me to start at the uh, description or? Yeah. Well, there. I mean, is Clay going to be on here, or, or are we going to? You can go. You can. can you hear me? Hi, Clay. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Good. Oh. We're putting in here a, uh, a 4 by 40, 141 foot angle beer uh, with a graded decking um, on an existing decking, two piles, three safety ladders, and with the reorient the existing staircase to, to fit the project. Uh, we, uh, we're coming straight off the bulkhead with the with the uh, pier, it angles down to uh, just, just above the waterway. We have 10 foot clearance um, for walking underneath the proposed pier. And uh, that's essentially what, what we're doing on this project. You can consult with the plans and the photographs. Bulkheads have uh, been replaced in good shape. Uh, this planting is along the back side of it. And there's not really any place to put any more plantings. It's pretty crowded back there. Yeah. And the pier line is 135 feet. The reason for the 141 foot uh, pier, it's angled in a way that it does not go over the extended property line. So it's it conforms with our 135 feet from the uh, the high tide mark from the bulkhead. So mm -hmm. it would be a pro it's an approvable project. Explain or elaborate on the 10 foot clearance, please, because this is a beach that's heavily used by the public. If you look at the third plan, if you bring that up, you can see this a staircase. We're reangling the staircase so it doesn't, uh, you know, it's just in this angle instead of the other angle. And that arrow there is 10 feet. It's a very yeah. hot. It's almost identical to the. Uh, property to the north of Bay Avenue, where they uh, bulkhead uh, the staircase, uh, the deck comes off the staircase to the connection is about eight or 10 feet. So even uh, th there's no way it's going to, the dock is going to interfere with public pass and repass. You basically walk underneath it uh, parallel to the uh, bay. Okay. And it's on the southerly portion of the property. So it's yes. So it leaves some um, room for the public at the end of the road. Yes. It doesn't go the extended property line, which is the reason it's angled like that. It's similar to the pretty much the two docks to the north of Bay Avenue that we, we just approved. Right. Yeah, you got pictures of them. You can see them. And you can see the mm -hmm. dock to the first picture there. You see how high that dock, uh, the deck is coming off the bulkhead. So mm -hmm. you can easily walk underneath there with no, uh, you know, interference of the dock. Mm -hmm. So we're good to move it forward then? I'm okay. I think so. All right. Yep. Very bad. Sounds good. Well, that's all I got for you. Okay. So we have a, uh... 
the waterfowl division. So does Jessica handle on that? Yeah, she is. Um, actually, Lisa Kay is going to handle that. If She's Charles coming in. Let her in. She's coming in right now. Thank you. Okay. I guess we can stop calling her Lisa Kay. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Just playing Lisa now. All right, here I am. Hi, Hi. everyone. Hey, Hello. Lisa. Okay, so the first one on today is uh, permit number 50. Stephen Rempe was a late application. He did send in a letter. I, Stephen Rempe, spoke with Bill Powell on November 6th uh, about my duck blind paperwork. I emailed him that I would have it in today, Monday, 11 8, which he did. So. He's all good. Um, Bay Constables, all his information is good. Bay Constable said it's all good. Up to you. Fine with me. Okay. This is the first time that he was late on it? Yeah, first time. I'm good with it then. We could move. I'm fine for move approval. Mm -hmm. Me too. Good. All right. Okay, the next one, Ed, permit number 99, Sean Borolsky. Uh, he did not want to, to renew, so he's returning his spot to the wait list. Good. Fine okay. with that one. All right. Next one. Um, Mr. Stubelik has two. Uh, he yeah. did put his um, application in on time, uh, yet his co-permittee did not. So we are going to take his co-permittees off and okay. just leave him on. On 80, I'm fine with that. Per 88 and 89. Yep, I'm familiar with both those locations. So so he's keeping it. Okay. And there was, just to be clear, there, there was no um, contest of this um, by either of the co-permittees. No, the co-permittees so are no his need. sons. Yeah, or right. his, his son. And right. he just so, did not get his paperwork in. So. Right. So there's no need for public hearing. No. Okay. Thank you, Liz. All, right. All right. And then um, we have Raymond Satchelbaum. Sockleben. 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 Who Thank wants you to very do Bill? Much. <laughs> uh, he's transferring, uh, Eric is transferring his co permittee to Timothy Squires. Uh, the Bay Constables are all good with both of those. Uh, the paperwork is all up to date. They're so it's just a matter of transfer. I'm good with that. Oh, my. Yep, it's good. Okay, the next one is permit 202, Peter Saltini and Stephen Rempe. Um, this is, uh, I'm sorry, Stephen is off this blind. It's just Peter Saltini. He wants to change from a uh, floating blind to a shore blind. I'm good with that. Do we need to change that if Stephen is no longer on here? Do we do we need we, to do we anything? We did that already. The last meeting, uh, Stephen was taken okay. off as a co-permittee. Yeah, I left him on yes. because he's technically on the permit still as of right now. But at the meeting today, he's going to be removed. Okay. So we'll make the amendment for the blind change and the removal today at the meeting. Okay, um, I was able to get it into the res this part of it into the resolution as long as you guys Great. adopted it. Thanks, Jess. Constables were good with this. Yes, constables were okay with it. And and uh, Bill Bill hasn't opined on it yet. Um, Bill didn't say anything about it. I don't know. Well, we can move it. We can move it forward, and then uh, we got two yeah, weeks. Two anyway. weeks. If we got an issue, we can always discuss it and get the right. issues re rectified. Right. And okay, and then. Permit number 227, Masiko A. Mahamar Marovic, doctor. Um, his application was late. Uh, he did not give a letter. I did try calling him and I, his, a, his voicemail was full. I also he, tried emailing him and his email was full. He, he called he just, me. He's, yeah. He did call me. He had a death in the family. Oh, okay. Okay. So 
I, I have right. no problem with it. He was in the office when I was here last time in the office. Uh, and right, and that's when he put in work, right? Yeah. yeah. He's a doctor, so mm -hmm. during this time. So he submitted yeah, yeah. all the proper paperwork so all good? that was necessary? Yeah. Okay. His paperwork was all good. Bay constables didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd say let it's all, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, permit 191, Nicholas Hayward, it's expired and a non-renewal non permit. I emailed and I called him. His email was returned with no known address or address not known. And his cell phone number has been turned off. So I think this one should go back to the waiting list. Yes. I agree. Yep. Okay. And then permit 197. Christopher Conkin wants to transfer his permit to Richard Franks. Oh, uh, well, I don't uh, know. Characters, I think you better really scrutinize this one. Yeah. <laughs> so then that's, then it, Rich has got the maximum. I'd watch out for points. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> all good? All good. Yeah, it's that's, fine. Okay, that's all I have for you guys. Thank, Thank you very you, Lisa. much. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, yep. so it is uh, 12 o'clock. Do you want to, uh, if there's nothing pressing uh, this morning, we can uh, move the, we can discuss anything we have to on the, in the executive session on the bridge conference call uh, after the regularly scheduled meeting. Well, that sounds good. That's, that's fine, as long as that doesn't go too long, because I, I have some meetings that I got to get to. Well, I don't expect it to, I mean, it's just resolution, so you don't uh, really. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, on that. There's one one public hearing that shouldn't be long. I'm good with that. No, that's that can be handled rather quickly. We'll motion to adjourn this meeting. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, okay. All see right. You see you guys in a bit. Thank you. Okay. okay bye.